When you hear the phrase, the cheapest autofocus lens ever made, the first thing that you should be thinking is how bad is it? And the answer is surprisingly good. In fact, I'm shooting this video on it right now. So this is the image quality you're gonna see, and this is the quality of the autofocus coming out of this lens. When it comes to pricing, the pricing has been changing and they've just released it on two new mounts. So it's available on three different mounts now. So I'll put links in the description down below that'll take you to the three different mounts. And if any more become available in the meantime, I will link them down there as well. Now, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the build quality on this lens, because that's why I really thought this thing was gonna suffer. From the time I took it out of the box, I was shocked by how good the build quality was, and I really, really didn't expect it to be as good as it is. You've got an all metal lens body, you've got a metal lens mount, it even comes with a tiny little metal lens hood. It has a clicked aperture ring, which is really tactile and nice and doesn't bump out easily. And it's got a really smooth focus ring. So these are all things that I really didn't expect at this price point. I didn't even expect the lens to be made of metal, to be honest. In addition to all that, it comes with a rear lens cap that has contacts on it and it has a USB-C port in the side of it. This allows you to put the rear lens cap on the lens and update the firmware of the lens. I think this was necessary because the lens is so small, they probably couldn't figure out a way to squeeze a USB-C port into the lens, but this is a really, really clever solution. The next thing I wanna look at is sharpness and detail. And this is generally a problem for small lenses. It's also generally a problem for cheap lenses. So I really expected that we were going to get a very poor showing here. And that's absolutely not the case. I was shocked by the level of sharpness and the level of detail that you were getting out of this lens. And it starts right from f2.8. You've got sharpness not only in the center of the frame, but right across the frame. I would say probably the biggest surprise of this whole thing was the sharpness and detail you're getting out of a small and inexpensive lens. The next thing is bokeh. Now when it comes to bokeh, I actually think bokeh and background blur in most situations to me is more important than sharpness and detail. Particularly if you're trying to take photos or videos or you're capturing images where you've got somebody sharpened in focus and you're trying to blow out that background, trying to make it blurry so you draw attention to the subject in your frame or in your video. And the reason I think bokeh is actually more important than sharpness and detail in these situations is because when you are focused on a subject, particularly a person in general, that person might only fill up somewhere between 10 and 25% of the total frame or the total image. So most of your image is actually out of focus. So I think having a creamy, dreamy, smooth, out of focus area is really important. And I think this lens does a great job of it. The one place you're gonna see these lenses come undone almost every time is chromatic aberration. And I thought this was going to be a problem for this lens. Once again, it wasn't a problem at all. And if you're not sure what chromatic aberration is, it's just purple fringing around the outside of high contrast areas, particularly when you have a backlight on your subject, you will get this glowing purple outline that doesn't sort of always look great. This lens at this price point has little to no chromatic aberration. And I can tell you that I've used lenses that cost $1,000, which have worse chromatic aberration than this lens. So where are the compromises? Well. There's a few, there's not a lot. And I think what you'll find is it it's kind of a little bit less related to price point and it's more related to the technology that these third party lens manufacturers have access to. And right now, one of the things that you will see is the biggest difference between some of the third party lens manufacturers and say Canon or Sony or Nikon's lenses is the lens coating on the lenses. And this does a number of things. The first thing it does is it increases contrast in your image. And what you'll find is with this lens, wide open at f2.8, you get a somewhat lower contrast image. It's not so low contrast that I would can compare it like to a vintage lens, but it's not as high contrast as a common or current Sony, Nikon, or Canon lens. It's kind of somewhere in between. Now, for me, I don't mind this, and I actually use a lot of these Chinese manufactured lenses specifically for that more interesting, low contrast filmic look. And I think it gives it a much more natural and neutral look. And in fact, some of the Sony lenses I have, I have to put filters on to knock down that sort of really high contrast, unnatural look that I get out of them. Also feeding into this and related to the coatings on the lenses is lens flare. 
And this lens does flare a fair bit, particularly if you get your sun in the shot. Once again, it's not as bad as a vintage lens, but it's not as good as a modern lens. It's kind of somewhere in between there. You can use this creatively if you want. You can actually sneak the sun in, get a little bit of a sun flare or a low contrast flare across your image. And this is gonna give you a very sort of filmic or vintage looking image, but it is a definite difference you'll notice between this lens and say a 600 or a thousand dollar lens. And the last place I see a compromise, and I don't think this is so much about price. I think this is actually about the size that they made this lens and that's vignette. At f2.8, you have very strong vignette around the entire outside of the lens. I, I mean, it's not just the corners, it even creeps into the top of the frame. There is a quite a strong vignette. Now, importantly, and something I wanna point out, is if you're doing sort of documentary style photography or walk around video, I often use vignette, I often add vignette in editing to draw attention to the center of the frame and give the image a little bit more interesting look. All the images and all the samples that you've seen, I haven't removed the vignette at all. So this is the vignette, this is what it looks like. In a lot of situations, you can't tell, but I think when you make a lens this small, you've got a very small opening, you've got smaller optics, and you end up with a significant amount of vignette. And the third thing that you're gonna notice, once again, something you can correct for, but it's definitely noticeable, is you get some barrel distortion. Once again, this is not an uncommon thing, particularly uh, with lenses of this size, but barrel distortion is definitely present. You will notice it in your photos more than your videos because the movement of videos tends to kind of take away that critical eye element of looking for those straight lines. Also, you should know in videos in Hollywood, anamorphic lenses and most lenses used in Hollywood have a, an amount of barrel distortion, some of extreme barrel distortion. So in video and in cinematic video, you are used to seeing barrel distortion. When it comes to photos, it's pretty much considered an undesirable trait, but it's easy to edit and straight out those, straighten out those lines. So ultimately I, I have to ask, who is this lens for? I think there's two different categories of people. The first one is, if you have the kit lens and you would like to try something different, something more interesting, a prime lens, this is a very, very cheap way to do it. It does give you a unique look that is somewhere between a modern lens and a vintage lens, which I really like. And you don't have to do any editing or tweaking or filtering to do that. You are going to get a unique image out of this lens that you're not going to get out of your kit lens. It's also going to go to f2.8 as the maximum aperture which most kit lenses do not do that, particularly at 27 millimeters. So this is gonna be a better low light lens than your kit lens as well. So this is gonna give you the experience of a prime and it's gonna get you better low light performance than your kit lens. Who else is this lens for? I think somebody who likes to do street photography, documentary style video, just walking around documenting life, I think it gives a really interesting look that works for that. But in addition to that, it is so small that it is extremely inconspicuous. And in my use of it, that's probably the thing that I love the most. It felt really, really stealthy. And when I put it on my small mirrorless cameras, it made them sort of feel and look more like a point and shoot camera rather than a big zoom lens or a big prime lens. This just makes people notice you a little bit less. It makes it a little bit easier to move around. And it means that you're going to be able to capture and document those candid moments more easily without sort of people seeing you and, and ruining and pulling them out of the moment. So I think that is the other category of people that I would recommend this lens to. Be sure to check the description down below for the links and availability and pricing on this lens. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.